Welcome to the Movement MFG Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Burisnock. I'm here with... T-Swag. T-Swag's in the house. All right, today we're talking about are the days of make, market, and sell over. All right, let's go. All right, we're back with another episode of the Movement MFG Podcast. Today... Um, like I said, we're going to be talking about are the days of make market and sell over. And I guess let's dive into what that actually means, um, in the first place. So the typical way that, uh, you know, the manufacturing process, the whole industry has done things, um, you know, has been you, your designers come up with the product. It's all about how you market it and present it. And then you go and you try to sell it. And you're basically kind of trying to fit this like cookie cutter product and trying to almost like force it upon customers versus versus um, nowadays. I mean, there's just so many options out there with online, um, just the way retail is done now. I mean, the consumer has so many options that it's all about the consumer now, not necessarily what you're making and then trying to kind of stuff it down uh, the consumer's face. Um, so what do you think about that, T-Swag? Well, I mean... Personally, I just feel like the amount of time that the big businesses take to, one, get the product they want, promote it, advertise it, get a marketing technique, whatever they're doing to, you know, sp- spread it, the word about yeah. the product is taking too much time at this point. That is, where that is true. That I feel like there's companies like us, for instance, that have the ability to make products, you know, weekly, where by the time that product that they've been pushing for a whole year – finally comes out it might be dated it might be you know i feel like you're investing a lot into that to be a year later finally releasing it when there's people like us and other small businesses that have the ability to put new products out at such a quicker rate yeah where i feel like that's where it's falling into our hands to be the you know the the process we use is is what i guess is winning right now yeah i know and the companies that are doing it a lot of them are direct to consumer companies you find that you know whether they're online or or brands that have their own stores they're not necessarily selling to other stores but they have their own stores just brands that 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 are that that are um close to the consumer and selling directly to the consumer seem to have this model down more than say you know the old lumbering companies that are struggling um struggling to adjust but I think the time thing that you mentioned, you know, because the obvious one uh, is, okay, you have this product and you have to try to sell it. You have to actually try to get people to buy it. But the actual time standpoint of, okay, having to go through all that, it just takes way more time versus creating something that's already in demand. Right. Yeah. I feel like the the process to even get your product developed, figuring out a marketing plan, like the the brand's already running laps around you because by the time you get your product Mm -hmm. out, it's a year later where... Like I said, for us, for instance, you know, we have the ability to put a new product out for tomorrow if we really wanted to. We could sit here right now, grind it out, and have a whole new product developed for tomorrow. Take product pictures, put it up online, and have it sold by the weekend. Mm -hmm. You got these big businesses that think they got to, you know, sit there and strategically place their marketing and, you know, promote it this way and the third and do all this and spend a lot of money on things that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's also another thing is that these smaller businesses don't really have the capital to go ahead and do all this promotion and all that sort of stuff. So, like, I feel like that might be how it kind of all started. Yeah. In the sense of like making it on demand. Yeah, it's almost like a struggle became an advantage. Right. Way. And I think that's what really the advantage is on our side is that we don't have to sit there with the inventory and worry about having a product that we developed a full year ago that's finally going live now. Because I know that you've been talking about like how your sister used to work for the big brand there yeah. and how, you know, yeah. they develop things and then three years later it finally come out. Yeah. I feel like, you know, there might be that possibility where that product you know is outdated in the sense where people aren't really onto that trend in the sense or whatever mm-hmm. but you have the ability to make it on demand mm-hmm. someone says you know you see a niche in the market and then that people are looking for whatever the case is you can produce that within the next week and put it out there people are going to buy it yeah but if it takes you a full six months to a, a year, year to get that product up and running yeah what's to say that product's even yeah. popular anymore yeah. I guess. yeah so then i guess the next step of that that would be tying in is that actual uh, manufacturing process or, uh, you know, beyond manufacturing process, that decision-making process is really, you know, you can call it on-demand manufacturing, you know, and it's not necessarily the extreme, you know, that we've dabbled with of is actually made to order, like truly 
item by item created on demand as it's already purchased. But, you know, so, so it doesn't have to be that, you know, or we don't have to refer to it as that extreme, but just, but just the fact of, you know, some of the brands that, that, that we work with, it's like, you know, on a weekly two week, three week basis is what it is. And, um, of, you know, whatever their, whatever the volume satisfies them is kind of what, you know, what it's used. Sometimes it could be a hundred, 200, sometimes it's 25 at a time. And it's like, okay, every two, three weeks, you know, it restocking on demand based on, you know, a couple week time span, not necessarily one, one unit at a time as, um, you know, as, as, as we, like I said, we dabbled with, but, but, but what, but what we're referring to is really the on demand manufacturing. I think that that's, um, you know, what's coming into play, uh, you know, more and more. Yeah. Cause I mean, I feel like you have the ability to, like I said, you know, get feedback from the customers and see what is needed and popular at the time. And you have the ability to, you know, make your own version of that in a very short limited time and still get it out in the market when it's, you know, people are still well, looking relevant. for it. Yeah, yeah. In demand relevant. Yeah, totally. Totally. And, and I mean, for the fact, I especially think like, one, you don't have to buy in a thousand units of this thing and then have them ready to go within a year mm-hmm. later. Like, I don't know. I just feel like yeah. to be able to do it on demand and within such a small time frame is where the advantage really comes into play. Because one, like you said, you don't have to worry about buying a thousand units of this thing and then finally going live with them six months later. And yeah. then I feel like those businesses struggle with trying to create new products because they're too worried about, oh, we have 900 of these things we got to push and sell before we can even try to so, make something new. It's so funny you kind of just said that because then the next the next thing that I was going to say is, okay, so the trade-offs. And I think, and that's why I said sometimes it's, it's not even necessarily the manufacturing process, but it's like the decision-making process, um, you know, the, the whole on-demand decision-making process, we can call it, because um, there are trade-offs with it. And... And I think that like what what we would run into, and you can probably talk more about this, is that like our manufacturing that we provide, like say per product, it's not the cheapest. You know, it's not the cheapest. You can go buy a gazillion of something, wait a long lead time, but your per unit price is probably going to be cheaper. True. So we're not ours is not cheap, but at the same time, you're probably going to move every single unit that you have. So in a way, you're paying a little bit more. To be able to provide faster, to be able to move every probably every unit that basically you purchase or inventory or have, so that's kind of like you know it's kind of like the decision making that people have to make. Right, and I feel like with small businesses, that's that's the kind of route they like to go because it also allows you to you don't have to invest so much into it. Okay, you, you know you only want twelve to see how it goes first. Okay, if those twelve sell, then we can jump back and do twelve more. But if you invest and you have to do a thousand of them and they don't move. Mm-hmm. What's to say you even have any extra capital on top of what you just spent to get that thousand? Yeah, yeah. And now you're kind of stuck because you're, you know, you just invested in something that's not moving, but now you don't have the ability to potentially take the product down and just, you know, in our case, use the fabric for something different. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and if you got a pair of pants that's already made, you, you, you can't really do anything. I mean, unless you cut them and make them shorts or something, <laughs> but like, yeah. When you have the actual materials there and you're making the products as they come in, you know, easily you can just pull the pro. Okay, like this isn't selling as well. Let's see what we can do to try to kind of change it up to, to make it sell. Yep. Or, you know, like I said, you're not going to be stuck there sitting out yeah. like, oh, how are we going to figure out how to push these 900 things when no one wants them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and everybody's, um, I would say, mindset or um, strategy, I would say, you know, is, is different. But I'm just, I'm just such a big believer in, um, you know, turn like turnover, like product turnover and getting it went on time when you need it to be able to move it. Um, just because like, if you're, I, it's just, just, I guess, I guess it's because we've been there in early, early days when we were starting up, which led us to this manufacturing process was that we would buy thousands and thousands of, of units at a lower price. And, we still had we couldn't get through all those units early on because it just was too much volume. Yeah, cheaper price, cheaper price, better per unit thing. But we couldn't move them. So to me, an inven- inventory you can't move to me is a bigger risk than than uh, making you know, a little less. Than, than, than basically, yeah, like like having slightly small, still having a good margin. You have to have a margin like that, and that and that's just good business. But the willingness to pay just a little bit more to have it quicker, you know, to be able to have it at the right time, be able to move it. You know, make and make sure you can move it because yeah. sitting on it, 
if you can't, if you, if you're not going to move, like it's okay to sit on it, whatever your problem. So even I say the on demand manufacturing, you get it, you sit. Yeah. Okay. Say you sit, you do sit on it longer than normal. Say, you know, fine. You know, but when it becomes a point of like dead stock where it's just dead, that's you're sitting on money. Um, and now you got to find ways, find ways to move it. And I right. feel, to me like that, that is the worst. Yeah. Worst scenario. Cause like I said, I feel like especially nowadays in like the time that we're in now, if you're, if you can't sell something within the first month, people want something new. You're going to keep pushing that same product for so long. People, people have already seen it. You exhausted them seeing the same thing. They don't yeah. want it or they would have bought yeah. it by now. Yeah. So if you don't, you know, keep staying relevant, like I was saying to you earlier about how like the reason like. The, the releases every week or every two weeks is, is such a pull for us is because it allows us to get people that weren't tuned in from last week's release potentially could be tuned in for this week's yeah. release. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not, you know what I mean? Like I feel like the big businesses get stuck trying to, obviously they have a lot more room to work with, but you know, when you're only doing one product and you have to, you know, do a thousand of them, but you got, to, if you have 12, the opportunity to do a smaller batch, you're kind of guaranteed to move those because yeah. You might, like you said, you might not make as much off of them, but you're going to be able to make another product and, and you know, continue that cycle. You're not going to make as, you know, as much margin as you want to, but at least you're guaranteeing it's going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're yeah. not going to be sitting on anything, but okay. You might not be up as much as you could have been if you, you know, bought a thousand units of it or whatever, but now you can, you know, your cycle can move a lot yeah. quicker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess like the moral of the story is, is, is. <laughs> I get story. that line. I get that line from T Swag. He says that uh, all the time. Yes, oh. about four times a day. Yep. Wow. I just I just said it. I think as soon as I said it, I realized I said it too. Yeah. Uh, moral of the story um, is that yeah, like it's it's fine to sit on stock. I think it's just avoiding dead stock is what it is. You know, because on demand manufacturing can still happen while you have say say a higher inventory level. You know, and that's fine. Say 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 you do. You know, you wanna you wanna make sure. That, you know, you have this hype of this product and you want to make sure you have enough and not be short and you want to be on a higher level for, for your for yourself, like a higher level of inventory. Yeah, like that's fine. I think it's really just the play of dead stock, you know, like really trying to really trying to avoid that. And you owe it. You bring me every single time to my next topic is is seasonal or seasonal releases fading and are rolling collections more effective nowadays you know and i know everyone has their own strategy but i wanted to get your thought on that where do you think you know like wait wait where if you're only doing four releases a year say you know and it's not to say like oh you don't base your products based on the season but it's just that you're putting it out every two three weeks right you know whatever it might be versus or once a month once a month whatever whatever that is but not but not every quarter not yes and not not every quarter. So, is is it is it fading? And also, is um, rolling collections more effective? I, I'd say. Like, like, what do you see from our customers? What do you think? I think, like I said, I do. They definitely like the fact that there's always something new coming, and it's not based. On, okay, like every four months, we're going to be putting out a large selection of items. We do smaller collections of different things, and then that gives us the ability to kind of put them out more frequently because it's like, oh, we got, you know, for instance, the camo coming out. That's a whole, you know, that's a couple items. Two weeks from now, we might put another collection out of, you know, another different fabric or something like that. And I feel like that's really where the attention gets drawn to is because we have the ability to show them something new very often mm -hmm. where if you're doing like, I think it works I mean, it might not work anymore, but like for larger brands like Nike, for instance, you know what I mean? I'm sure they could do four seasons every year and still be all right. But at the yeah. same time, I feel like yeah. they're even catching on to it. Where like, like Diamond Supply, they they do their season stuff, but they do like four or five different drops within the season. So uh -huh. it's still like you said, it's yeah, a rolling yeah, yeah. collection, but they name it like fall, da da da, whatever. Yeah. But you can tell that they're kind of implementing, like seeing the fact that they need to release kind of more frequently mm -hmm. because you kind of. You know, you, you kind of, you get, you get lost because yeah. if no one sees your brand for three months and then, you know, the fourth month hits and you're finally promoting it, like they've already found other brands that they're interested in that are putting stuff out more frequently than you are yeah. that they don't, you know what I mean? They're not interested in what you're putting out because they only see you so often. Mm -hmm. and I feel like that's, this day and age, true. like you need to the, the attention, the engagement, right you now. And if, you know, if you have the ability to put different things out there for them to engage in, I feel like that's where you're going to pull the customer bases. Yeah. Like if you do a capsule with you know, a particular person and, you know, you have the ability to do different things very often. 
it allows for the customer to be like, oh, what's that? I didn't see that last week. And then next week, something totally different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just feel like you kind of exhaust the product if you are promoting the same thing for three, four months straight. And then, yeah. oh, it goes on sale because we know we got a new collection coming out. Like, I feel like that process itself is what is 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 outdated yeah, at this to point. Totally. And I guess I, uh, just a story that came to my mind um, when you kind of mentioned that, that, you know, putting it on sale, you know, discounting, you know, trying to liquidate any excess inventory. I think that that kind of sums up a lot of what we're talking about where, you know, if you're creating dead, dead stock, um, you know, that, 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 uh, you know, is creating a problem also, you know, yeah, if you're behind the curve seasonally, you know, or whatever it might be, or if you're, or, or if it's just, if your season didn't hit, you know, or that release didn't hit, yeah, you're creating extra stock and you got to liquidate. Um, you know, I've, I've, I heard a story just from someone that I know that, um, you know, p a part of big, big brands and they did, you know, different collaborations with actually, you know, like a celebrity type figure, um, even at the biggest levels, they wanted they were doing specialty type products. They were not going direct to consumer really. Their primary was getting into stores. They were doing their seasonal. Um, they what they had to basically some of the requirements that that they need within their product created a higher um, minimum for their manufacturing. And they sat there and they, um, you know, basically divvied it out to all the retailers that place orders. I think that they were looking to sell. Um, some other items um, on their website and basically it just didn't you know seasonally whatever you know that what they designed at some of the items didn't pan out to what they thought but because they they basically knew they were going way over their minimum um, on their uh, on their on their product they had so much they had so much dead stock at the end of it they had to liquidate it sold sold it to a, a bigger chain I'm not gonna say and so that same product that was like specialty higher priced high brand whatever they had dead stock of it couldn't do anything with it had to liquidate it sold it off to kind of like a you know a, a resale type of a place and it just it just was a vicious cycle so in a way yeah okay you're meeting higher minimums you're trying to hit that price point it's a specialty type item that you know whatever you know whatever the you know things that align to have to go to that higher minimum you know you're sitting there trying to liquidate it anyways at, at no margin, if anything, a loss. So that's why it's almost like, yeah, pay a little bit more to have what you need to make sure that you're moving it. And then you're, you know, more as in, you know, again, good businesses have a good margin, but it's just not going, not paying just a little bit more to make sure that it fits, you know, it fits what you need. So I think that, that happens to everybody. I think, I think the biggest the companies just, you know, they're just so big. They're so saturated. They're everywhere. You don't necessarily see it, you know? So like, there's probably a lot of products that they have to liquidate that like, you know, are part of a, another brand that they had to relabel and distribute just to, just, just, just to liquidate to get the cash back on it. So I think that, you know, it's vicious, it's vicious. And I think that, uh, you know, keeping it lean with on-demand manufacturing is, is uh, you know, again, everyone has, has their own strategy, you know, but, but, but what we're seeing and the brands that we're working with, they seem to be thriving, the ones that we're working with, right? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, I think a great point, though, that you brought up is that even if for some reason they do have, you know, a couple leftover of their small inventory, you're not sitting on a $1,000, you know, a 1000 plus. Okay, you have two, maybe three, but you still, you know, you – you have the ability to come back and do something different now. Mm -hmm. And you know, all oh, that one didn't hit off as well, but this is gonna, mm -hmm. you still are able to do that because you don't have to go so deep into investing yeah. wise to do, Oh, yeah. we, are, we need a hundred, 250 of these. We can, yep. you can start small. If it doesn't hit as well. Okay. Yeah. You can still, I mean, that's, you can still turn and around and change it up. And that's part of like, say like the rolling collection. Like to me, it's nerve wracking. If you're doing four a year, four releases a year, you do, you know, you have all this planning, all this planning, you put it out. Yeah. Oh man! Holy, it doesn't hit as well as you shit. thought it was. It's it's nerve wracking to me that like all the eggs are in one basket. Like God, this better work. Yeah. This is it, you know. Versus like I know for us with with our with our GTS line and and even some of the uh, the brands we work with. Okay, you know you're doing a lean quantity, and then two weeks later, if that lean quantity works, guess what? You're reordering it again, and you're gonna keep pushing it because it's a great release. Okay, you do a lean quantity two weeks later again or a month later doesn't hit as much guess what work you're working through your lean quantity and you're moving it and you're fine it's not turning into dead stock but guess what then you're on to something else you know so to me it minimizes it just minimizes risk in a way 
you know, avoiding that dead stock. No, I think that's exactly it. You know, it's definitely, a, you know, like you said, lower margin, lower risk. But at the same time, I'd rather have that and know that I'd be, I'll be okay if I still sell just half of what I made here. Yeah. Because you don't need to, you know, I don't know. I just feel like you have the ability to, to come back to the drawing board a lot sooner than you True. do. If you're sitting there planning out for a, a, mm-hmm. a month release, that's going to be every four months. Yeah. All that time you're investing in that to turn around and not move. Now you're kind of like stuck. Like, okay, like. What's to say this the, the next release we do for you know, Mar- or fall or winter whatever the case is is yeah. gonna hit as well. Plus, I feel like I don't know unless you're a super large business that's got you know a lot of capital to work with. If you do a release every four months and it doesn't hit off, I just feel like you you kind of you don't really want to do anymore because you're like mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out how we can get rid of what we just got here. Yeah, you're stuck. If you're, you're a being... small business and you got a thousand units of something, it's not moving. You're stuck in the mud. It's probably not going to move very well. You're stuck in the mud. Which yeah. is why I think the bigger businesses yeah. kind of works. Yeah, you don't really cause, see because they you know, have they have resources to liquidate. It's just what I kind of outlet store, stores. Just, you know, yes, what I mean? they, they have, have the means they to have do it. Small brands. It's or you know the small smaller ones again. We're I would consider us one of them. I would consider every one that we basically work with one of them. Yeah, like the resources to just move, you know, to that you know on a small scale, say like a thousand units or something like that. It's it's tough. The resources I would say for the most part are not there. So that's why yeah, I think the big guys also can. They you know it's not great for them. I would say, but um, I think that it's something that like they try to avoid. But they work through it because of because right. of that. Yeah, you know? and they, they have. But, but yeah, so but I think that again, I think but the also, you know, again a struggle turning into an advantage where you know the 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 smaller direct consumer brands they can't they can't they have that struggle so they can't go down that route so then therefore they go with you know the more on demand and there you go and I think it almost creates an advantage for them and yeah I hundred the percent think it does yeah. you said you're not going to make as much margin as you do but you're not going to also be risking as much because you're not investing as much into it mm-hmm. i think that's just anything that you do in life you know yeah. what i mean if you're not going to put that much into it but you still have the opportunity to go back and change that yeah, if it doesn't yeah. work as well you're agile yeah you you have the you're still on offense as we like to say you know what i mean you're not 100 percent playing trying to figure out how we're going to defend ourselves to be able to stay as a brand if we don't sell what we you know mm-hmm. what we just invested in here but if you're only doing small batches of it you know that one doesn't hit off as well you're still, you can still yeah, you're come still back and do the, another Yeah, one. you're still on the offense. You're not sitting there trying to like be on the defense of like, okay, how can we get rid? How can we dump and liquidate right. something? Yeah, stuff. like your mindset is stuck on trying to figure out how to get rid of something that you have that no one yeah. wants when you should be worrying about how what can we yeah. create next, you know? And I feel like that's where, you know, the on-demand process really plays for the advantage of the small businesses yeah. because it allows them to get small batches of things. If it works for them, great. If it doesn't, then we're, you know, we're going to try something else out. Yeah. And I think that also they even use it to their advantage because if it does work out and they still do something else, then it kind of gives you like that feeling like, oh, like, you know, I better get that while it's there because they only have a limited amount of them. You know, these big brands, you know, not to say that they don't do collections that are, you know, limited in a sense, but I feel like their products aren't really as specialty in a sense because it's not like a limited run. Yeah. And I know like. For instance, for us, you know, we do we, specific roles that are kind of smaller. About, like, you know, we order in a limited amount. When that's sold, it's gone. And it kind of gives you that, the, the an advantage because people know that it's going to be gone. Yeah. And I think that is, you know, it helps the small businesses because if you know you can push the yeah, product and you demand. do it. Yeah, demand, that's yeah. the word I was looking for, create demand. demand. Yeah. And I think that's really where, you know, the on-demand process thrives for the small businesses because, you know, the supply is low, which means the demand can still be high. Yep. If your supply is high and your demand's low, then mm. it's, you're screwed. You're screwed. You're so, screwed. and I think that's why a lot of people end up coming to us in a sense because, you're you know. You're screwed. Yeah, you really are though because it's not like you really have much to do. You're, yeah. You got a bunch of stuff no one wants. What did, you can drop the price. I mean, we've even seen it with a couple, you know, we're not going to talk particulars here, but. You can drop the price as low as you want, but then you're almost giving it away at that point because yeah. you just no one wants it. It's like okay, yeah. we'll just we just want something. Mm-hmm. And then if you got a thousand of them and you just want something, then mm-hmm. you're really not going to end up getting anything out of that because you're going to be sitting there just trying to get rid of things yeah. when instead of selling them. And I think that's where you know the on-demand process we thrive from because we have the ability to go in there and switch it up and change things a lot more frequently than if you have a full, you know, four month brief that you've been building up to do this whole promotion plan and for some reason something backfires 
you're screwed. You, you've, been you're screwed. On, you've been working on this thing for four months. Yeah. You know what I mean? You come here, we work on a product for a week. Okay, it doesn't hit off as well. We just take it down and try something else and, you know, try to figure out a way to make it pop off. I mean, yeah. we've had products that, you know, it didn't work as well as we wanted to. So we just kind of revised it, did something different yeah. to it, and then reintroduced it. Yeah. There's you're, no you're, way to reintroduce you're almost, it. You're almost you, list, yeah, you almost, it gives you almost opportunity, what, what we kind of talked about first, where it kind of gives you opportunity to listen to that customer make the adjustments to what the customer wants that's exactly instead of yeah again you can't make adjustments instead of stock of yes exactly and yeah and instead of also again forcing that cookie cutter like down their throat where it's like nope this is it now we got to try to make it look cool and sell to them versus listening to them creating what they want bringing it to the table yeah if you're a big business and there's people that want something by the time you give them what you want and you go through that whole cycle you're four months out yeah. For small businesses, oh, we you know we see that there's interest in whatever this is. We can probably yeah. offer that within the next two yeah. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even full some, on the market ready yeah, to go. Yeah, because I know like even some of the some of the brands that we work with, like they'll come to us and be like, like uh, you know, they'll come to us and be like, oh, you know, I'm seeing my customers are interested in this type of style, this type of style. Like can we do something like this, and then we'll basically develop, put the product together, put the style together to them, send them a sample. They actually can sit there, uh, show it to their customer, let them touch, feel, see if that that's what they want. Boom, ready to go. Small small batch to satisfy a couple weeks to get them started. Not like satisfy them for the next six months. It's satisfying their, their inventory levels and their demand for the next, say, two, three weeks. Yeah, get it's it, like instant get, get it, get it to them quick. Instead of being like, oh, we're going to make you 1,000 units delivered to you in six months. Um, you know, So then therefore you have a lot of them. It's like, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, let, let's basically, it's in, it's in demand right now. We'll get, we'll get it to you in a few weeks. To be, able, to be able to satisfy a few week demand, then guess what? If it's going in, keep re up, keep re up. Yeah. Keep, you, and we might hit a thousand units all over six, a six month span, but hey, we don't let, have to. We don't. We don't have to wait six months. We don't have. We don't have to risk say the thousand units. No one has to risk it. Us that what you know what I said us, but any you know anyone that that yeah. that that we're working with, and so therefore th- like that's the mentality, and that's why I say it's not necessarily oh. Our manufacturing, yeah, it's our manufacturing, but it's also the mindset. And I think that this is what a lot of people, you know, fail to understand is that it's not just it's not just the manufacturing process. It's the mindset behind it. So it's like we can also provide the manufacturing process, but if the brand we're working with doesn't, you know, doesn't have the mindset, you know, to to basically, uh, you know, go along with it, then our process, then it's not going to necessarily be effective either. Um, but what we find is that a lot of people who do come to us they're looking for that that mindset to be able to partner and work with so that's why you know it's almost always always successful but um all right let's uh we'll wrap this up yeah any last any last moral of the stories i know moral of the story is if you want something good come to us (laughs) you want something uh that basically you can create on demand yeah all right um yeah so that's it and that's it all right thanks for tuning in thanks for tuning in Moral of the story, <laughs> tune in next time. Yeah, right. that's true. Tune right. in next See time.